What's going on guys? Today we're out in the beautiful woods. It just snowed yesterday and I'm out here setting some snares for rabbits and by the end of the video we're gonna head back home and cook up our catch. So you guys stay tuned for that. Okay, so here's some of the rabbit snares I have. This is a, a snare pen. I don't know if you can see it, but there's one snare right here. There's another snare right there. There's another snare right there, and then there's another one down there. And then in here we got some like tips of branches and stuff for bait. I'll throw this piece in too, just for scent, I guess. Might help, I don't know. Then we have blocked in all directions except for the snares. So hopefully we can make a catch on a rabbit here. That'd be awesome. And there's a lot more rabbit snares than just those few on that pen. There's some ones on trails and stuff too. And hopefully we can get something to eat, guys. I'm I'm hungry right now, actually. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, there's squirrels and rabbits all over the place here. There's more squirrel tracks that come right here. And yeah, tons of rabbits and tons of game down here. All right, guys, so I'm gonna quickly show you guys how to set one of these rabbit snares. Now I've got kind of an improvised, quote unquote, rabbit trail here. Um, and I've just got some of this wire that I'm using. This is brass snare wire. You can, I bought this at a gas station here. And it's pretty basic. Um, I just cut, you know, like a two foot section of snare wire. I just make like a really basic kind of loop right there. And then you just kind of go like this and just kind of tie it off. Now you want something more sturdy like this. A green pole or a good sturdy dead pole works pretty good. Just, you know, use your common sense. You don't want them to take off with it because that's not gonna be too good but you'd want to wire this off pretty good today I'm only doing a couple wraps just for this demo you get your loop you want your loop to be like two or three inches off the ground so let's say the grounds right there you know your loop would be something like that and the loop size you want about the size of your fist so something like that then we'll take just some sticks kind of and just shove them on either side of your rabbit trail on either side of your snare and then one more thing we're gonna put a little chin-up stick just kind of like right underneath there that way the rabbit won't duck his head and go underneath he'll go right through the snare and also you want to put some more kind of sticks around here and just make it to where he's funneled into there it's okay if you put it you know quite a bit of blocking you just want him to go through this snare and he'll go through there and get caught it's rabbit for uh, for supper so we're gonna go and we're gonna wait a few more days, a couple days, and we'll come back and check these snares. And hopefully we got ourselves a critter and then we're gonna be cooking it up, guys. All right, stay tuned. What's going on guys? We're uh, we're out here checking the rabbit snares that we set out two or three days ago. Um, I got a long walk ahead of me. Well, it's not too bad, but it's about a 20 minute hike down this back road here. It is definitely a little bit of a walk. Um, it's probably about plus three right now, so. Yeah, the last couple nights have been cold, so hopefully we uh, got ourselves a hair and hair too in uh, some of our snares, so. Also check out my epic hat. It's pretty awesome, I know. All right, guys, I'm back here. We're checking the snares here. We got the snare pen. Looks like all the snares are pretty well untouched. I'm not gonna bother moving any of the snares right now because it's supposed to, a lot of the snow is supposed to melt and they're supposed to freeze again. So not really any point in moving them right now, but we still got quite a few more snares to check. There's another one there. Oh, snare pens right there. We had a rabbit walk this and go bump right into my snare, which is right there. And he didn't even, he didn't get caught. That was sometime just this morning. Because we only just got the snow. Didn't get him. Okay, so the rabbits are on the move anyways. We'll come over here and we'll uh, follow this little line here. And fingers crossed we got one, guys. Like I really just, that'd be so epic. Hey, there's a rabbit right there. Ran over there, came from over here. Looks like we uh, have a snare here somewhere. Oh yeah, there it is, buried, nothing in it. We got one more snare to check. We didn't get any rabbits in any of these snares. This snow doesn't help at all, but deep snow does help with the snaring. Just not when it's like this and it dumps it on your snares. Okay, 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 so I hope my camera doesn't die because of the water, but I was just walking this and I was like, I'm missing a snare. I was trying to find my ribbon because this one was marked. See how I have my ribbon? There's one over there. Okay, so then I come over here and I'm like, well, where's my stupid snare? Because I don't know where the darn thing is, eh? It's over here and it looks like something's in it. So I don't know for sure, but I. I... <laughs> Okay guys, so I'm editing this video right now and I'm realizing how much I'm overreacting here. It's only a rabbit, but it, it was 
it was pretty exciting still, okay? So, so just bear with me. Anyways, we're gonna check this one together, guys. So I'm gonna have to dig this up. Oh my goodness, guys, I think we got something in here. Yes! <laughs> we got something! Oh my goodness. Let's uncover this. There we go, baby. This is the second snowshoe hair I have ever snared. Thank God, for real. That is so awesome. He doesn't seem like he's a big guy, but that is okay. All right, so we'll take a closer look at this critter. You can see, so these are snowshoe hairs. So not actually rabbits, they're hairs. So their meat is pretty dark, um, but it should be really good. So they got kind of black tips on their ears. And the reason why they're called snowshoe hair is because look at those giant feet. Pretty big feet on them compared to their front feet. So in the summertime and a lot of the fall, they're actually a brown color. In the wintertime, they turn white. So another name for these guys is also the varying hair. So uh, meaning their color varies throughout the year. Really, really nice fur on this guy. I'm gonna be using the fur and the meat and we're gonna be cooking this bad boy up. So now with all the snares checked and the rabbit caught, we're gonna head back home and cook up our catch. All right, guys, now we're back in the house. My mom actually let me uh, uh, clean this rabbit on the kitchen table, so huge thanks to her for that. But we're going to be taking the fur and the meat off this, so I'm going to be taking the meat. Obviously, we're going to be cooking and eating that in this video. And then I'm actually going to be saving the fur for later. I'm probably going to tan it. I mean, it's a nice fur, so why waste it? And fast forward to the next morning. So the recipe that I'm going to do is going to be like a rabbit stew. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the rabbit up into three little sections so that's easier to fry and sear in the pan. In the frying pan, we're going to put some olive oil and get that hot. Then we're going to start browning the rabbit on both sides, and this is going to add a nice flavor that you wouldn't normally get if you just started boiling the rabbit. After the rabbit's good and seared, we're gonna drop it into a pot. I'm gonna start cutting up an onion. I'm gonna throw that in there. We're gonna throw some Worcestershire sauce in there. And then I made a last minute decision to add some celery in there as well for some flavor. And then we're gonna top it up with some water and we're gonna let that baby boil. We want it to boil for quite a while. This is gonna, you know, get some good flavor in there. Take a, extract the flavor from the meat as well as the bones. A few hours later and the meat is nice and tender, we're gonna pick that all off of the bone and we're gonna basically separate the bone from the meat. We're gonna keep the meat back in the pot. We're gonna add some olive oil. We're gonna add some butter. The butter's gonna add some nice flavor. We're gonna cut up another onion. And as you can see, we already have some carrots cut up. We're gonna add the onion in there. And we're gonna kind of saute that onion in with the butter and the oil. Now after that's kind of sauteed, I'm gonna add some uh, water. It's already hot. And I'm gonna add one of these bouillon pack things. I actually ended up adding two and we're gonna mix that in there. And then we're gonna go ahead with all of our rabbit stock and add that in there. Then we're gonna add some seasonings. I just kind of went crazy. I thought I was adding bay leaves, but I was actually adding basil leaves. And it actually turns out it actually tasted pretty okay. So yeah, and then I figured out we actually we actually do have bay leaves, but I, I just got confused. We're gonna throw that a bay leaf in there, so. And there's my mom, she's actually adding in the carrots, which she chopped up for me very nicely, and she also chopped up some potatoes, so we're gonna add the potatoes in there as well. Oh yeah, and then I decided I'm gonna put some rosemary in there. I like rosemary, especially in stews. So yeah, we're gonna let that boil, and then I added in some frozen peas. We're gonna let those, you know, start kinda cooking there with them. Now, after that's been cooking for, I don't know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, uh, I wanna thicken this stew, so I just uh, mixed up some flour and water, just shook it in a mason jar, and I'm gonna be adding that in there and you can see it's just gonna make it really really nice and thick and then I also did add back the uh, the rabbit pieces I waited a bit to add them back because I knew that if I had them in there with it boiling it was just gonna turn them into a bunch of stringy pieces of rabbit and I wanted to be chunks all right guys here we go we got some of the rabbit it uh, looks really good nice and thick beauty it smells amazing it's pretty hot That's actually really good. I'm impressed with my cooking skills. Mm. Wow. Let's go see what my grandmother thinks of it. All right, now here's a piece of the rabbit. We'll see what you think about that. <laughs> what does it taste like? I don't know what it tastes like. You it's take good. A it's, carrot to it's anything? good. I don't know. Chicken? Chicken. Just chicken? Well, it kind of textures like chicken. Yeah, it's stringy. It's good. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. The next video is going to be a beaver catch and cook. So you guys subscribe to the channel for that. We're really close to 1K subscribers. I really want to get there. It's just please, please, I want to get monetized. Anyways, um, click right over here if you want to see a raccoon catch and cook. And click right over here for a perch catch and cook.